This is a video commentary by Anderson Franklin, a member of the Richmond 34. The photos in this exhibition of the Richmond 34 are a snapshot of February 1960 March and sit-in protests against racial segregation and discrimination in Richmond, Virginia. Over 200 students from Virginia Union University participated. I was one of those students who sat at lunch counters designated for rights only and requested to be served. We were denied service. We remained seated at the lunch counters in a nonviolent protest until the store closed. Boycotts and protests stand to stand up against segregation continued for weeks. It is important for me to share with you some of the larger background story. On February 1st, 1960, four students sparked the nationwide sit-in movement by sitting at the whites-only lunch counter at Woolworth store in North Carolina. They became known as the Greensboro Four. Several weeks later, on February 22, 1960, 34 students were arrested for trespassing at Tolheimer's department store, one of the largest retail stores in Richmond, Virginia. These students became known as the Richmond 34. I was one of them. The photos capture images of us as college students at lunch counters and engage with authorities. At that time, we were the first mass arrests of students participating in the nonviolent sit-in movement against the policies of racial segregation. We sparked similar sit-ins throughout the state of Virginia and in other places. The trespassing convictions of the Richmond 34 were appealed through the courts and repealed by the United States Supreme Court in 1963. Our movement to break down traditions of segregation helped pave the pathway to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. What is important to understand is the historical context of these times behind these photos. The sit-ins by students were a national movement that stood up to the Jim Crow segregation policies of the United States. It evolved out of a larger civil rights movement led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other leaders. Dr. King had spoken at Virginia Union University months prior to our march and inspired us to challenge the status quo. You must keep in mind that segregation policies had existed throughout the country for decades before the 1960s. There were many strict codes of behavior as well as laws that separated the races at the local, state, and national levels. We were living in America's apartheid. A culture of segregation and discrimination was part of the fabric of American society, the embodiment of everyday racism. By our actions as students standing up to racism, we not only put our lives at risk, but also put the welfare of the university, the African-American community, and our families at risk for harm and economic losses. The elimination of segregation and public accommodations took years to achieve by laws and social practices. We must remain vigilant and continue to oppose racism and discrimination in our country. Please be a student of history. If you want more information and history about the Richmond 34, just Google the name Richmond 34 and do the same on YouTube. There is a book, The Richmond 34 and the Civil Rights Movement by Kimberly Matthews and Raymond Hilton.